Now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Fibber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. The very first episode of Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as reporter Randy Stone from 72 years ago, February 6, 1950. It is entitled Zero. And we thank you for joining us on this Sunday edition of Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. This is the 6th day of February, the 37th day of 2022, and we have 328 days remaining until we get to 2023. In Paris on this date in 1778, the Treaty of Alliance and the Treaty of Amity and Commerce signed by the U.S. and France signaling official recognition of the new republic. Massachusetts became the sixth state to ratify the Constitution in 1788. New Jersey granted the first railroad charter to a John Stevens on this date in 1815. Uh, Ulysses S. Grant gave the U.S. its first victory of the Civil War in 1862 by capturing Fort Henry, Tennessee, known as the Battle of Fort Henry. The 20th Amendment to the Constitution went into effect on this date in 1933, shortening the time from election to inauguration. Inaugurations were in March. The 20th Amendment moved them to January. Now, uh, it was on this date in 1959, Jack Kilby of Texas Instruments filed the first patent for an integrated circuit. At Cape Canaveral on this date in 1959, the first successful test firing of a Titan intercontinental ballistic missile. And in 1971, Alan Shepard became the first person to hit a golf ball on the moon. Well, Houston, while you're looking that up, you might recognize what I have in my hand is the uh, handle for the re- contingency sample return. I just so happens to have a genuine six iron on the bottom of it. In my left hand, I have a little white pellet that's familiar to millions of Americans. Uh, drop it down. Unfortunately, the suit is so stiff, I can't do this with two hands, but I'm going to try a little sand trap shot here. They got more dirt than ball this time. Here we go again. That looked like a slice to me, Al. There we go. Three is a die. One more. Miles and miles and miles. The first golf ball drive on the moon on this date back in 1971. Uh, and Elon Musk's SpaceX Falcon Heavy, a super heavy launch vehicle, made its maiden flight on this date in 2018. Passing away on this date in history, Arthur Ashe. Arthur Ashe was just plain better than most of us. Former Georgia congressman and former senator from Georgia, Arthur A- uh, Andrew Young, talking about Arthur Ashe, who passed away on this date in history. Also, the man behind the wonderful music, uh, from the uh, Charlie ba- Brown Christmas, Vince Guaraldi passing away on this date. Hugo Montenegro, the man behind the uh, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly music. Uh, Danny Thomas, the man behind St. Jude's Children's Hospital. And fine singer, comedian, entertainer. Also, actor Joseph Cotton. The man who created Captain America, the Fantastic Four, and the Hulk, Jack Kirby, passing away on this date. Singer Falco passing away, Beach Boys Carl Wilson, actor James Whitmore, and the world's foremost authority, Professor Irwin Corey, a very, very funny man, wacky man, passing away on this date in history. This is the birth date of Aaron Burr, Babe Ruth. Are 714 home runs the most you ever hit? Well, uh, that's quite a few, isn't it? (laughs) Well, I tell you, in the old days... uh, but say back to, up to 1921 or 20, if a man needed, if your ball club needed one run, it was three men on base in the ninth inning. And for instance, I got up there and hit a home run. It didn't count for a home run. It only counted for one run driven in. Uh-huh. So you make the score two to one or three to two, something like that. Well, I hit quite a few like that. Babe Ruth, born on this date in history, also President Ronald Reagan. 
I can't help but think about how often, at moments of accomplishment and triumph, as well as crisis and heartbreak, we came together in this way. A president giving his accounting to those under our system of government to whom he is accountable. We've shared a great deal together. For me, it's been a special relationship. Believe me, Saturdays will never seem the same. I'll miss you. From his last Saturday morning radio address, President Ronald Reagan, born on this date in history. Also, um, Thor Ravenscroft, the man, your mean one, Mr. Grinch, wonderful voice. Uh, Zsa Zsa Gabor, born on this date. Patrick McNee from the Avengers, no, not the one with the superheroes, the British television series, did so many great roles. Actor Rip Torn, uh, singer Bob Marley, and Natalie Cole, the daughter of Nat King, both great singers. B.J. Honeycutt in MASH, Mike Farrell, 83 today, Tom Brokoff, 82, from Teen Idol, or the Teen Idol, I should say, Fabian Forte. So many great songs, 79 today. She was Peggy Hill in King of the Hill, Kathy Najimi, 65. From The Parenthood, Robert Townsend, 65. Guns N' Roses' Axl Rose, 60 years old today. Uh, Singer Rick Astley, who will never give you up and never let you down, at 56. From Teen Wolf and Gotham, Crystal Reed, 37. And from The Polar Express and Two and a Half Men, Tanashi is 29 today. Those just a few of the people who celebrate the 6th day of February as their birthday. And if this happens to be your birthday... Hi, we're the four freshmen, and we just want to say... Happy birthday to you! From 72 years ago, February 6th, 1950, Frank Lovejoy in Nightbeat on this Sunday edition of Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. The MyPillow.com clearance continues. Roll and go anywhere. MyPillow's $9.99. The Body Pillow, $39.99. And MyPillow bath sheets on sale, 50% off. Use my promo code USA. Go to MyPillow.com slash radio specials. You'll also get a free copy of Mike Lindell's book. MyPillow.com slash radio specials. Use promo code USA or 1-800-951-8175. Here's some great news. If you missed the deadline to sign up for health insurance, or if you just have a plan you're not happy with, you still have a choice. It's called MediShare. There are hundreds of thousands of members, and they love it. MediShare has a 98% customer satisfaction rating, and this is obviously huge. The typical family saves around $6,000 a year switching to MediShare. Find out more. They're great to talk to. 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE. Thanks for tuning in to this Sunday edition of Classic Radio Theater on your favorite station. Frank Lovejoy had done a ton of acting. Uh, Best remembered for uh, Alfred Hitchcock's The Hitchhiker. And also in this show, we're going to bring you Nightbeat. A lot of our friends know we've heard him on a lot of suspense shows and other programs. Uh, And he is married to actor, actress, I should say, Joan Banks. And uh, they both died in 1962. That's an interesting coincidence. He did a lot of suspense, uh, did a lot of episodes of The Whistler. He was uh, he the title character in the syndicated Blue Beetle in 1940s. Uh, I've only got a couple of episodes of that, and they're of horrible quality. But uh, he was very, very active. And he also played the title role of Matt Sabetic in the motion picture, I Was a Communist for the FBI. Now, let's get to Nightbeat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone, going back 72 years, the very first episode, February 6th, 1950. Nightbeat. Hi, this is Randy Stone. I cover the night beef for the Chicago Star. You know, stories start many different ways. But this one began modestly enough with a zero on a typewriter. That's right, cipher, not nothing. But to one man of Chicago's four million, that zero meant death. 
Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Rudy Stone. Mine is a funny kind of a job. When that evening sun goes down, I start walking through the dark city, peering into bleak alleys, wandering through the bright neon, listening to the sounds of a city at night, the whisper of footsteps, the shattering roar of an L train, the sob of an ambulance siren. I wander up the boulevards, down the back streets, searching for something in the dark city. And what exactly is it that I seek? Brother, it's something more elusive than the farthest star. I seek the city's heart. Tonight I must have walked for miles. The cold wind off Lake Michigan, ad living with my ribs and the hot breath of my deadline biting into my neck. Then ahead of me I saw that friendly oasis in the darkness. Benny's all night beanery, otherwise known as Tomain Junction. Throwing caution to the winds, I started through the door for a cup of coffee. Operate. Operator, answer me. Nobody around but Benny polishing the counter. Operator, and this little blonde party. yapping excitedly into oh, the wall please, phone near the door. Please hurry. Such devotion, somebody should get that excited over me. Hello, Mrs. Warren. Yes, we were disconnected. Has he come home yet, Mrs. Warren? How are you, Benny? How's the bicarbonate king? Oh, oh hiya, Randy. Oh. You always say that, but you keep coming me. back. <laughs> Glutton for punishment. Oh, you've got to find him. You've just got to. Get her. What's with her, Benny? No, no. 25 calls she makes like that. 25 times she gets the same answer. 25 times she comes over to get more nickels. Business is good, huh? Yeah, a hole in the head. What's in it for me making change all night? <laughs> Give me some change, please, nickels. Lady, sooner or later, I gotta run out. This is it. I gotta have some. I don't make them here, lady. Now, will well, you please... change quarters, dime. Uh, let me take a look, see if I have any. Oh, yes, please do. But hurry, please hurry, I... I gotta reach him. Randy, make with the catch. He's passing out. Oh, easy, lady, easy. Out cold. Coffee, Benny, quick. It's one thing I'll say. If Gabriel's trumpet doesn't succeed in waking the dead, all they've got to do is send for some of Benny's coffee. After I got a couple of sips down the girl's throat, she started coming out of it. Tears rolling down her face, her whole body trembling with sobs. Oh, come on now. Now stop it, honey. Stop it. What happened to me? You passed out, but good. What time is it? Oh, it's 9.45. I've got to find him. I've just got to. Oh, now take it easy. You're still shaking now. Come on, have a few more sips of this so-called coffee. Oh, no, no. Well, if you think Benny's coffee is bad, you ought to try his hamburgers. I've just got to find him. Who have you got to find? The man. What man? The man I killed. Ask a foolish question, you get a foolish answer. Only before I could ask any more questions, a little lady was on her way out of the place. I looked at Benny just to make sure he'd heard the same thing I had. He'd heard. His mouth was hanging open like somebody had taken off the hinges. I left the beanery and started after the girl. At first, I thought I'd lost her. Then I saw her sagging against the side of a building under the elevator tracks on Deering Street. She saw me coming. I'm just an old busybody. I don't know what to do. I'm going crazy. I should call Mrs. Warren again. Maybe he came home. Who? That man. Uh, the man you killed, huh? Well, that, that makes sense. Now listen. Oh, I... you don't understand. You just don't understand. This you can be sure of. I've got to find him. I've just got to. You've killed him, but you've got to find him. Yeah. I, I must go. Please. Please let me go. I'm not holding you, kid. But I... I don't know where to turn. I... You don't want to go anyplace, do you? You want help. All right. Here it is. I don't know you. My name is Stone. Now that we're formally introduced. The, the newspaper columnist? Well, the uh, man's got to eat. Oh, maybe you can help. Maybe you can, Mr. Stone. Yeah, but first I've got to know why you keep calling the home of the man you killed to see if he's gotten in yet. This is slightly confusing. All right, I'll tell you. My name is Ruth Baker. I'm receptionist and secretary for Dr. Stanley Loring. The specialist? Yes. Go ahead. There was a man, Philip Warren... A week ago, he saw Dr. Loring for an examination. Today, this afternoon, he came back for the report. I was in the outer office when Mr. Warren left the consultation room. He looked strange. Strange and frightened. Who 
Will you give me a cigarette, Miss Baker? Oh, certainly, Mr. Warren. Here. There's a lighter on the table. Never mind. I, I don't want a cigarette. Oh, is, there, is there anything wrong? Hey. What time have you got? 3.15. You're a minute slow. <laughs> All that? But the minute is important. Very important. Ooh, if you're going to catch a train. No, it's always important. Well, yes, I, I suppose it is. Oh, yes. You know, I, I've lived all my life that way. Paying attention to time. Being punctual. My wife considers it a nuisance. Do you? Oh, I, I, I'm afraid I hadn't thought You of... should. Everyone should. Time. If you thought how many different ways one tells time? It can whisper in an hourglass. Or tinkle in the tiny little clock. Or it can roar. Or... Yes? All my life it's been important to me. Now he won't tell me when. All he says is sometime. That's not fair, Miss Baker. It's not right. Oh, look, Mr. Warren, perhaps you'd better lie down. Oh, no, no, no. I've got several things to do. Many things, in fact. Oh, I see. You don't. But that doesn't matter at all. <laughs> you know, in my office, I can hear the chimes of the clock in the tower above me. I've always listened to them. I, I like them because time is important. But I never heard them chime midnight. Midnight? I guess midnight is a special time. It's neither tomorrow or today. It's, it's in between. Tells a man that the day is over, another one's going to begin. It's like standing on the edge. Goodbye, Miss Baker. M Goodbye, Miss Baker. Yes, Doctor? Miss Baker, will you come in, please? Right away. Warren gone, Miss Baker? Yes, he just left, Dr. Loring. Yeah, that was certainly unexpected. I was almost certain it wasn't that serious. Well, put his examination report back, will you? Yes, sir. The closed file, Miss Baker. The, the closed? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. What was it? An inoperable condition. Oh, now I see. See what, Miss Baker? Why he acted so strangely. Oh. Don't worry. You'll go home, think about it. When the first shock wears off, you'll accept it. What else can he do? What else can anyone do? After that, I went back to my desk, Mr. Stone. I was checking my files and... Come on, Ruth, what? I made a mistake. A horrible mistake. What was it? Well, when a patient comes in for examination, only Dr. Loring knows his name... The technical laboratory has only a number, a number on a card. Mr. Warren's was 5129. I typed it wrong. I typed 5120. The card number of another patient. It was a mistake. I put Mr. Warren's name under the wrong laboratory number. The number of a, of a man who is going to die. Certainly, Dr. Warren will be able to tell if Warren... Well, just a routine checkup would indicate symptoms. It, it took actual laboratory work to, to make certain. Oh, I see. He'll kill himself. He's that kind of a man. And if he does, I've killed him, murdered him. And if... I... I don't want to live. I'll kill myself, too. Oh, now, come on. Come on, now. There's no time for that. Does Dr. Loring know? I, I told him right away. And he tried to reach Warren? Oh, we've been trying since this afternoon. At his home? Everywhere. He, he must have gone home first because he left his wife a note. Suicide note? Yes. Ruthie, come on, let's go. Well, where? To Warren's home. And if he's not there, well, well, Chicago's a big city. It'll be tough finding one man among four million people. But we can try. the note when I got home, Mr. Stone. I knew Philip went to see Dr. Loring, but I didn't know... Just the note and nothing else, Mrs. No, Warren? No, nothing. You called the police right away? Well, of course I did. And you haven't left this apartment? Not for a second. Well, didn't he phone, try to get in touch with you at all? No, Miss Baker, he did not. And if my husband isn't found before he kills himself, I'll see to it that I you... I keep telling you it was a mistake. Anyone could make a mistake like mistake? that. Mistake? To make a man believe he's going to die in horrible pain? No, that's no mistake. That's murder. The cruelest kind of murder. Don't please. Get out of here and leave me alone. Wait Get a minute, out. Wait a minute, Mrs. Warren. 
Why crucify this kid because she made a mistake that could happen only once in a million years? To my husband. To anyone. Oh, leave me alone. You want to find him, don't you? Well, now, what kind of a question is that? A nice, reasonable question. You want to find him. All right, help us. But what can we do? By midnight, he'll... He'll be dead. The note he left said so. Someone's at the door. It might be him. I'll get it. Irma. Mr. Warren? Uh, Warren? We, we know. Paul. I... Paul. Yes. Paul, what, what did you find out? Oh, nothing. I, I checked every precinct station between here and the Oak Street Beach. Mm. Uh, uh, Paul, this is Mr. Stone. And the girl oh, who... I, I, I see. Paul is, is a friend of Philip's. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing you said? No, no one's seen him. And no suicide report? Well, not his. It's ten now. We've got two hours to find him. You know, that bothers me. Why should he choose exactly 12 o'clock to die? If you knew my husband, you'd understand why. The ticking of the clock was the most important thing in his life. You could set your watch by his schedule. Up at 7.30 in the morning, never 7.28, never 7.31, 7.30. Breakfast at 10 minutes to Irma, 8. Irma, we haven't time to worry about Philip's idiosyncrasies right now. We've got to find him. As the young lady said, we've only got two hours. I'm sorry. Try to think the way he would. The very first night beat with Frank Lovejoy from February 6th, 1950. Thank you for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Are you suffering with arthritis or osteoporosis? Do you have diabetes? Did you know that these are just two of the hundreds of diseases that have seen improvement with Dr. Wallach's incredible longevity products? You can't get them at a health food store. The only way to get them is to call us at 800-214-0065. That's 800-214-0065. Do you have heart disease, fibromyalgia, or high blood pressure? Do you have a terrible time losing weight? Dr. Wallach can help. He was a veterinarian and cured diseases in animals. He felt that he could do the same for humans, so he became a physician. Over 50 years of research and helping people like you goes into every bottle of Dr. Wallach's amazing discoveries. Do you want to feel better? Learn how to treat the cause of your problem rather than covering up the symptoms with drugs. Call 800-214-0065. That's 800-214-0065. You're listening to Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite station. We're listening to an episode in the very first episode of Night Beat starring Frank Lovejoy as it was broadcast Monday, February 6, 1950 in the newspapers of that Monday 72 years ago. These were some of the headlines. <laughs> FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover will give Congress a confidential report today on the Dr. Klaus Fuchs atomic spies case. He has already said publicly its ramifications in this country are being traced, a hint other suspects may fall into the FBI net. He will testify in secret before the Congressional Atomic Energy Commission, which is invest committee, which is investigating the possibility of trying to extradite Fuchs from London for an American trial. However, the committee sees scant chance of success. Meanwhile, Richard Weil, writing for the International News Service, reports from Berlin, the father of Dr. Fuchs, said last night his son, who has been jailed on charges of stealing atomic secrets in the U.S. and Britain for Russia, has been a lifelong active communist. The father, gray-haired 75-year-old Professor Emil Fuchs, also declared his son was interned in Canada as an enemy alien during the war and asserted he was released on the recommendation of Professor Albert Einstein, who did not know he was a communist. <laughs> Intelligence officers of the Western Allies have received detailed reports that Soviet zone communists plan to seize control of Western Berlin by violence on May 28th. The coup would be attempted in connection with a gigantic German youth rally. A high German source said that Western authorities and German officials were conferring on means to meet the threat. A special congressional election will be held in New Jersey today to find a replacement for J. Parnell Thomas, and Democrats said the imprisoned congressman has made it easy. The voting will be confined to a sprawling territory in the northern section of the state, the Big 7th Congressional District, which hasn't elected a Democratic congressman in 35 years. But the Democrats predicted today will be different. They say they're counting on a resentment vote. Uh, which resulting from the scandal which sent the last Republican representative to federal prison on a payroll padding charge. 
President Truman offered the chairmanship of the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission to 40-year-old Charles Luckman, who recently quit as a $300,000 a year president of Lieber Brothers. Asked to confirm it, Luckman told the United Press, you'd have to ask the president to get a direct answer. I will not deny or confirm the report. The White House has refused to comment. Though some of the day's top news stories as reported in the newspapers of Monday, February 6, 1950, on your radio, Frank Lovejoy, in Nightbeat, which continues now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. What does he do for those two hours? Where does he go? What does he want to see? He's lived all his life doing things exactly the same way. That's all. Well, that's something. What are you getting at, Stone? Well, I, I was just thinking. Nobody ever lets go of life without holding on to something else. Nobody knows whether you can take a memory with you or not. Maybe it's just a face, a melody, a favorite place. Nobody knows, but we we like to think so. Philip. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, that that Philip would want to die exactly as he'd lived, knowing exactly when and where. That's what I mean, Mrs. Warren. What? I want a list of every place your husband might go. But... uh, I'm telling you, Mama. There are so many places. A hundred, a thousand. What's the difference? Write them down. I'll go with you, Storm. No, no, you stay here with Mrs. Warren. Somebody's got to be here if he shows up. And step on it with that list, Mrs. Warren. We've got a lot of places to cover by midnight. If we haven't found him, then we can cut our list down to one place. The county morgue. From 72 years ago today, February 6, 1950, Night Beat on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. The conclusion is next. What does it mean to be an American? Just what are our American values? Working hard to succeed. Loving God, country, and family. Being honest, strong, and compassionate. Supporting our Constitution and recognizing that we are blessed to be living in America, the greatest country in the world. Our Bill of Rights protects us, our freedoms of worship, speech, and privacy, our right to own firearms, our right to trial by jury. Our right to be free, to live our own lives without some bureaucrat telling us what to do. Most countries don't have these rights. Want to know more? It's all there in the book. Get your own free book, the U.S. Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. Then read it again, and this time, share it with your friends. Our great Constitution is the basis of all of our freedoms, our inalienable rights. Get your own copy at freeusbook.com. Brought to you by the American Media Council. Jimmy Stewart on Monday's Classic Radio Theater with an episode of The Six Shooter from 68 years ago, February 7th, 1954. Clay Fenton, a young boy from the East, comes west to learn ranch life. It appears he, he's beaten one of the ranch horses. That'll be coming up on Monday's Classic Radio Theater. But now the conclusion of Night Beat starring Frank Lovejoy, 72 years ago, February 6th, 1950. Night Beat. Stars Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. Find one man out of four million people. Find one place out of a thousand square miles of city and do it in two hours, 120 minutes. A long chance? (laughs) Compared to our job, a buck on the Irish sweepstakes was money in the bank. We had two things in our favor. One, Mrs. Warren had called the police. A thousand cops had Warren's description. Two, Warren himself. The way he lived was a clue to the way he might die. On time, punctual. But where? The first list... The first place on this list was a little restaurant where he sometimes ate. They knew him there, all right. Uh, Mr. Warren? Uh, Yes, I know him. Has he been in here tonight? Tonight? Yes. Yes, tonight. I see you don't know Mr. Warren very well. Mr. Warren comes here on Tuesday evenings only. This is Monday. Cross off one place. Go to the next. Yes, they knew Mr. Warren. No, he hasn't been in tonight. This is Monday. He comes here only on Fridays. Grab a cab and hurry on. Watching the minutes go by. Watching Ruthie die a minute at a time. Telling her no matter how bad we were doing, the cops would find him for sure. The cigar store, where he stopped for cigarettes, missed him by an hour. The newsreel theater, sure, an old customer, but he comes on Wednesday for the new weekly show. Ruthie wanting to call Mrs. Warren again to see if the police had found him yet, but no time. 
40 minutes gone. An hour lost. Going down the list. Hey, Ben! Lady Dishon! Hey, kid! Oh, hey, but mister... No, not right now. Listen to me. Every night a man stops by here. His name is Warren. Oh, I know. What about him? Well, has he been here tonight? Oh, sure. Hey, what gives with that guy? What do you mean? Well, any other night he's by here six o'clock sharp. Tonight he comes past after ten. Buys a paper. A late edition. He's never done that before. In fact, I, I never seen him after six. Which way did he go? Did he say anything to you? Nothing. All he does is buy the paper, walk away, and then he throws the paper away like he don't want it in the first place. Which way did he go? Uh, straight up Michigan. Uh, that way. You've got to admit it's unusual. Yes, I admit it. I admit it. Thank you. Come on, Cabby, Move. <laughs> So we went straight up Michigan Avenue that away. All we accomplished was to lose another five minutes of our time. And brother, when it came to time, we were really scraping bottom. Those ever-loving cops were becoming more important by the second. One by one, we kept scratching names off the list. The cafeteria, where he sometimes stopped for coffee, but not tonight. The drugstore, where he stopped for stamps, but not tonight. Then the last place on the list, the very last... A little cocktail lounge on Michigan Avenue. One of those she-she joints where the lights are so soft and low you can't watch the bartender watering the booze. Our two hours were just about all used up. Can I help you, sir? Oh, pal, if you can, nobody else can. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I'm looking for a man named... Philip Warren, do you know him? Oh, yeah, yeah, quite well. I consider Mr. Warren one of my special customers. Was he here tonight? Well, why do you ask? We don't have time for anything but yes or no answers, please. Yes or no. no I really don't feel I'm at liberty to discuss with complete strangers. Oh, Randy, Randy, it's not going to work. We're not going to find him. Something wrong with Mr. Warren? Well, to put it mildly, yes. Now, come on. Well, if you'll tell me why you... Oh, no, listen, it, please. See, it's not really proper to tell just anyone who happens to inquire. Pal, Randy. unless we find him in the next 15 minutes, Warren is going to die. You're joking. Look at this girl here. If Warren dies, she'll... Never mind, look at her face and tell me I'm joking. Oh, all right, I, I didn't know. Mr. Warren's a good customer, you know, two strangers asking. Was he in here and how long ago? Well, he, he came in a little while ago. I thought it was strange, you know, because he's late. It he's always comes in promptly at 5.35. Never mind the details. How long ago? Uh, about uh, ten minutes ago. He sat at the usual place, but then he didn't drink his sherry. Do you know where he went? No, no, I don't. Did you see him go? Oh, yeah, I saw him leave. All right, now think. Has he ever said anything about going anywhere from here? No, no, no. He was always very quiet. Oh, but I think his office is near here. What makes you think that? Well, he mentioned once he always leaves it at 5.30. I see, always... thank you. Where's the phone? Uh, near the entrance. Come on, Ruth. Thank you. What is it, Mr. Stone? What did you think of? You got his home phone number? Oh, yeah, written down Good. here. Thank you. Why are you calling here? I want to know where his office is. But why? All his life, punctual, methodical. Everything to him was a habit. Maybe it's a crazy hunch, but I could be right. He could have gone to his office. Yes, you could be right. Come on, come on. Answer, answer. They've got to be there. They said they'd stay. But they don't answer. Ruth, do you remember where his office is? Must be on your records. Oh, I don't remember it. Oh, but we can go and get it. There's no time. Try it again. They're not there. I told them to stay there, the fools. I... What? The phone directory. Might have a business listing for him. One, 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 one. One, Paul. Philip, Philip, one. Is it... No, only his home phone, the number I just called. Mr. Stone. What? If Mrs. Warren isn't home, she might have gone to the police. Maybe they found him. That could be it. Keep your fingers crossed that they found him alive. Stone, snooping around this precinct for stories? I've got one, Mac. So? Listen, I'm in a hurry. You've got to tell me something. Why, sure, Randy. What? There's a general call out for a man named Philip Warren. Have you got anything on it? I'll take a look. Warren? Philip Warren? That's right. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Mac, come on, come on. No, nothing here on that name, Randy. Nothing. Mac, you're crazy. The call went out this afternoon. Every precinct has got it. Well, this is one of them, but there ain't a thing here. Take a look for yourself. Here's the sheet. No, I'll take your word for it, Mac. Listen, put out a call right away. He's got to be picked up. He killed somebody? He'll kill himself. You hear that, Mac? He'll kill himself if he's not found before midnight. Before midnight? But that's just 15 minutes. Yes, yes, I know. What did they say? They didn't have a call for him. Well, that, that's crazy. They must have. Mrs. Warren, call the police. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Word. Just a minute, Cabby. Look, Ruth. Let's figure it. Yeah. That last cocktail lounge, the bartender said Warren came in every evening at 5.35 
That he left his office at 5.30? Mm-hmm. That makes his office a five-minute walk from the cocktail lounge. And, and what he said to me, remember? What? 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 He said he liked to sit in his office and listen to the chimes from the tower above his office. Tower? Tower? Five minutes from that cocktail lounge on Michigan Avenue. Look. Look up the avenue. The Wrigley Building. The clock in the Campanile Tower. Ruth, that's got to be it. We've got ten minutes to get there and find the office. Cabby, Wrigley Building, fast. The red in the traffic lights didn't mean a thing, but it still took us three minutes to get to the Wrigley Building. When we got there, the hands of the clock in the Campanile Tower pointed to seven of twelve. And as we looked up, the larger hand crossed out another minute of Warren's life. One more went by before the night watchman heard me pounding at the doors. And then he opened them. Hey, hey, what's all the fuss? Look, look, my name is Stone, Chicago Star. Yeah, will that give you the right to pound on doors? No, please, please, just listen. Does a man named Philip Warren have an office in this building? No, he ain't got no office. Are you sure? Sure, of course I'm sure. Man named Warren works here. Philip Warren? Sure, works for Western Research. Did he come in tonight? Eh, why? Stop asking questions, please. We've got to find him or he'll be dead. He was all right when he walked in. I all right, take us him. up to him. Hey, you've got to sign the in and out sheet, just like everybody else. All right, all right, we'll sign it. Just take us up. Yeah, okay. Now, to use a freight elevator. The regular ones don't run at night, not this time. I don't care which one we use. Just get us up to Warren. I stopped looking at my watch while that freight elevator droned its deadly way up to the floor where Warren had his office. And then at last, we were there. Uh, uh, Western Research Office is right down that way. I'll just... You'll call the police. Sir? Huh? Call the police. Tell them you're calling for me to get here as soon as they can. Oh, sure, okay. Thank you. Come on, Ruth. There it is. There's no light inside. It's open. There's no one here. Find the light switch. Yeah. All right, never mind. I'll light a match. What's the matter? I thought I saw someone at the desk when you lighted that match. All right. Follow me. Look. Mrs. Warren. What are you doing here? Well, I thought of the same thing you did, and I... Irma. Irma, you still here? Yes, Paul. Mr. Stone is here, too. Stone? Yes. Turn on the light, Paul. Why wasn't the light on in the first place? Well, we thought if Philip came here and saw a light, he wouldn't come in. That's right, Stone. We, we called the police. They had nothing yet, so, so we came here. We, we thought You called did. the police? We, we just couldn't stay home and do nothing. The police didn't tell you anything, huh? No, everyone's looking for Philip. I'll ask you nice, Paul. Where is he? I don't understand. Let's stop playing patty cake. Where is he? I tell you, we don't know. Sure you do. Well, you're one of his best friends. Where is he? Come on, give. Well, we don't know where he is. We came here for the same reason you did. You never called we... the police about your husband like you said... You didn't want them to find him. You're insane, both of you. Come on, poor boy. Tell me where he is. I tell you, I don't know you. Now, let's try it again. Come on. Stone, you're a... Never mind me. Let's stick to the subject of the moment. Where is he? I told you. Where is he? All very neat and clean, wasn't it? Let the old boy kill himself. Just don't do a thing about it. Stop it, Stone. Stop it. You tell me when, Paul. How much insurance was he going to leave to your lady friend? You sure it isn't one of those non cancelable policies, Paul? You know, some of them don't pay you off on suicide. Tell me where he is. Tell me. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. He's on the tower. He's on top. Top of the building. I saw him. He's going to jump. Here's your boyfriend, Mrs. Warren. Catch. The tower, Ruth. Come on. The elevator. No time. Tower's only two flights up. Come on. I'll need you. One minute of twelve when we took the first step of the two flights. The run-up was like one of those dreams in which you stand aside and watch yourself. There was a queer, impersonal detachment about it that made the horror even more real. And then we were out on the roof. Do, do you see him? No, no, not yet. Up there. Where? Look, on the tower. Warren! Warren, wait! Warren! Yes, yes, I'll wait. I guess it's not quite time. I've got to finish off the day. You've got to listen to me. You're not going to die. Do you hear me? He said I was. But he wouldn't say when. He wouldn't tell me when. But I know. I can tell you. It's not quite 12, but what it is. Warren, look here. Ruth, make him listen to you. Mr. Warren, look at me. You know who I am? Yes, I know. I know everybody in the world. And I can see everybody from here. Please. The report was a mistake. You're not going to die, do you hear? It was a mistake. Please, listen to me. Good night. 
With him. What about him? Keep talking, Ruth. He's watching you. Keep talking. Oh, Mr. Warren, you're all right. Do you hear? You're not going to die. He said I was. He told me. It was a mistake. Please, please don't lie to me, please. It's the truth, Mr. Warren. You're not going to die. Do you believe it? <laughs> Thank heaven. You can get him now, Mac. He'll hold on until your boys reach him. So here I sit, trying to write my story for tonight. But I keep hitting that one key. Zero. Zero. Cipher. Not nothing. Ah. Oh, dear. Someday, a nice, peaceful story is going to be written about a flock of happy little birds leisurely circling a burned-out world, wondering whatever happened to all those crazy two-legged characters who spent their lives knocking each other's brains out. What a nice thing to read that would be. <laughs> yeah, but wait a second. Who'd write it? <laughs> All right, you broken down two-bit philosopher. The makeup editor's got to go home, too. So let's get going. Hello? Give me a rewrite. Nightbeat, a new dramatic series, stars Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. Tonight's story was written by Russell Hughes. Nightbeat is edited by Larry Marcus and directed by Warren Lewis. Music by Frank Worth. Others in tonight's cast were Peter Leeds, Gene Bates, Larry Dobkin, Joan Banks, Stacey Harris, Wilms Herbert, and Junius Matthews. Frank Lovejoy will next be seen in Milton Sperling's production, Rock Bottom, released by Warner Brothers. Listen next week at this same time and every week as Randy Stone searches through the city for the strange stories waiting for him in the darkness. The stories that come out of the shadows to find their way into Night Beat. Kind of appropriate for his wife, Joan Banks, to be on the episode, wasn't it? Frank Lovejoy and Night Beat from 72 years ago, February 6, 1950, on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Hope you'll visit my webpage, classicradio.stream, where you can stream our shows on demand, learn more about classic radio collecting, and contact me, classicradio.stream. And remember, if you miss a day, you don't have to miss a show. Not only can you hear our shows on classicradio.stream, but anywhere podcasts are served, including iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Just search for Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. It's important you include that last part, Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Have a great day. Please thank this radio station, support their advertisers, and as always, tell your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater, my favorite radio station. <laughs>